Good afternoon, I hope you're all well. This is going to be my painting guide for the Warriors of Rohan, for the Middle Earth strategy battle game. Um, basically what I do to get them onto the table quickly, uh, primarily using the contrast paint range from Games Workshop. I'm going to be working on two figures side by side just because that's the way I do it. Okay, so to get things started, I've undercoated both models with a spray of the Citadel Grey Seer undercoat spray, and I've just done that all around both models, just trying to get a nice even coat. I'm not going to bother doing any kind of xenophore highlighting with a lighter spray, as these are just foot troops, and to be honest, I just want to get them on the table. So the first colour to use is Militarum Green and I'm going for the largest area which is the cloak of both warriors. This is a great sort of army green and it works really well um, with the Rohan colours especially if you look at the sort of source pictures uh, for these from the film they've kind of got this light army green kind of cloak. Uh, when I'm putting this on I'm trying not to let it pull and you'll see that I drag the brush down just trying to move that colour to the bottom of the cloak and I just want to do this all over both models. While those are both drying, we're going to work on the tunics for both of the warriors. So for the guy to spear, I'm going to do a red tunic. And for the other guy holding the sword, I'm going to do a darker, richer green. So starting with the sword wielding model, I'm going to use Dark Angel's green. And I'm just going to hit all of the areas where the tunic is visible. Trying really hard not to get any of the contrast paint on the leather armor areas. It's not the end of the world if it does go on there, but it will just take a little bit longer because you'll have to repaint that um, for a, with a different base coat. Um, I'm just trying to get all of these and then I'll just put them on one side to dry. Right, working on the second warrior, I'm using Blood Angels Red in exactly the same way that I used the Dark Angels Green on the previous warrior. The only exception here is it doesn't matter if any of that red goes onto the scale armour because I'm going to be basing that with a silver colour so you can afford to be a little bit less neat on this one. Now it's time to work on the leather armour and I'm going to use my favourite contrast paint for this and that's Gore Grunt of Fur which is this lovely sort of chestnut brown colour. Uh, just going to paint that all over the leather parts of the armour um, on both models and uh, just be careful again not to get it on the areas that you've already painted. I'm now going to base coat all of the metal areas on both models uh, with a dark silver. I use gunmetal from the Vallejo game colour range but any sort of dark metallic silver will do. So I'm just going to paint this over the scale armour, the helmet, the metal part of the spear and the boss of the shield. Using Skeleton Horde now from the contrast paint range and I'm going to be painting all of the greaves, uh, wristbands and leather strapping on both models and this just gives a bit of nice tonal variation because it's just a bit lighter and therefore those details will stand out slightly. When you're doing models like this, which are sort of very green and brown earthy tones, sometimes there can be a lot of similarity and therefore you can lose certain aspects. So it's nice to vary things up where you can. Now it's time to basically wash all of those metallic areas we've already painted with Basilicanium Grey. As I'm working on this guy, I'm now going to paint the shaft of the spear with Ushapti Bone, the Games Workshop paint, just being careful not to get it on any other areas. Going to start working on the shields now, and for this shield I decided to use Blood Angels Red, and I'm just trying to pick out all the areas around the shield design. It's not the end of the world if it does go onto other parts of it, but it's just easier. Right, I'm now going to base coat the flesh and for contrast painting I like to base coat all of my flesh areas with the GW paint Pallid Witch Flesh. It's a really nice undercoat to work from and when you put a contrast paint over it it's just a bit warmer, especially if you're doing living people. Just a quick layer now of the contrast paint skeleton horde over the haft of the spear. I'm 
going to pick out some of those gold details now and I'm just going to use any gold. I'm going to use Retributor Gold from Games Workshop because that's what I had near me at the time and I'm just going for the pommel of the sword but also a few random scales on the armour. I'm going to use the contrast paint Gilliam and Flesh just to do all of the flesh areas. Um, I'm not bothering to do any highlights because they're, they're so small so just be using it straight out the bottle. Time to put a bit of a base coat down for the hair and the beard. As this is the Rohan and they're all fairly fair, I'm using sand yellow. This is a Vallejo model colour, but I'm going to be putting contrast paints over these to get some different tones. For this guy, I want him to have sort of a light brown gingery hair, so I'm going to get that great gore grunter fur and I'm just going to paint it all over the areas on this model which I've base coated with the sand yellow and for this guy going back to skeleton horde so he comes out a bit more of a blonde Time to work on the shields again and I'm using Iandan yellow for the inner ring of the red shield and then I'm going to switch to apothecary white and I'm going to use that to shade the horses and all of those triangular details. Now that's dry I'm just going to use white scar and I'm just going to use that to highlight those same areas. Quick coat of the contrast paint wildwood over the reverse of the shields. Right, to finish things off, I'm doing an all over dry brush of the Vallejo colour deck tan and primarily focusing on the cloaks and sort of the tunic areas just to add a bit of wear and tear. Okay, they've now dried and I've stuck the shields on. I've added a little bit of extra gold detailing to the helmet of this one just to get him to stand out a little bit. Uh, but overall, I'm really pleased. It's a pretty simple method that I use here. Again, I'm, it's just designed so I can get things onto the table quickly. And this could also be used for sort of Vikings, Saxons, Normans in the historical ranges as well. So all that's left to do is base them. Okay, and I've now based them and I've used a fairly straightforward basing scheme and to do that I've just used ground covers, I've used some uh, 4 mil dead grass, static grass to mimic that look we see on the Pelican Fields in the films um, and I've also just added uh, a tuft to the base of the spear throwing model. Um, I just wanted to keep the basing nice and simple just along with the rest of the model and I'm pleased with how these have come out. Um, Use, doing it this way I can paint two of these guys in about 15 minutes if you take out a little bit of drying time obviously the base and the glue takes a little bit of time to dry um, but that way it doesn't become monotonous um, I can paint these as I'm painting other models which is what I tend to do um, and while I've got other things drying I just do a little bit on these anyway I hope that you guys have found this useful I hope you like it I've tried to um, change things up in this video a little bit let me know uh, if you uh, think it worked or not and I hope to see you guys again soon.